Hey there, I'm really excited to bring you episode 3 of Tony the Movie Guy, remakes and reboots. Enjoy! Hello, everyone. This is uh, Tony, the movie guy, and as always, my uh, lovely assistant, Miss Money Any. Say hi. Good evening, everybody. Hi. Okay, this is episode three, and uh, we're going to do a deep dive on remakes and reboots. So on the first episode, um, we kind of touched upon, you had mentioned romantic mm-hmm. comedies. So as the second episode, uh, we did that, which was, funnily enough, that was quite intense. Because <laughs> I had you and my what wife, Daniela. expect? <laughs> two girls, one guy, like totally outnumbered. <laughs> um, but I thought it was still entertaining. Um, and we did kind of a deep dive on uh, rom-coms. So for this episode, we're going to discuss reboots and remakes. We had kind of gone into... How, um, I don't know, it's kind of become a real thing in Hollywood right now. Just tons of remakes, reboots. And look, some of them, they they do get right. And some of them were just suckers for, uh, you know, there's some movies, as many times as they'll remake it and reboot it, I'll watch it. And some are are really just a god awful. So um, I thought that would be kind of fun to go through. And I probably don't have all of them, but, uh, you know, I've kind of listed out, you know, some that I thought really worked and some didn't. And uh, I thought we should just go through them. Let's do it. Sound good? Yeah. All right, excellent. All right, here we go. So one of the best reboots, um, I think, ever, which I think everyone is going to agree on, and I think it actually blew people away, is Mad Max Fury Road. That was absolutely (laughs) brilliant. That film was, it was a game changer. Um, I mean, not only do I think, did it catapult itself to be one of the best action films you know, ever. Um, it's also visually beautiful. Yeah, incredible. You know, Tom Hardy, fantastic. And then also it brought one of the best feminine heroes, mm-hmm. Charlize uh, Theron's uh, Furiosa, that's ever been brought to screen. Excellent. Um, and I also thought Nicholas Holt was fantastic mm. in that movie. I, I really thought his character was amazing. But, yeah. uh, you know, um, George Miller in the, I think in the 70s, he did Mad Max with uh, Mel Gibson and he did The Road Warrior and then Mad Max uh, Beyond Thunderdome. Uh, and then nothing for like 20, 30 years. Wow. And I've actually gone back and watched those movies. And uh, I personally don't think they hold up very well, the originals. Now, The Road Warrior, the second one, still has incredible um, set pieces and you know car chases and stuff. But just as films, they're, they're quite outdated. Mad Max Fury Road, I mean, that film was phenomenal. It Brilliant. swept the Oscars. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing more to come. So, I mean, that's a reboot done right. Would you totally. agree? I, I completely agree with you on that one. Okay. 100%. Excellent. Yeah. So that that's a fantastic film. Um, there, then there's obvious ones like, okay, there, there's the Dark Knight trilogy from Christopher Nolan. To me, that's a reboot. You know, you, okay. you know what's yeah. funny is Batman, when that came out in 1989, Tim Burton, Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson's Joker, that film was like groundbreaking at the time. Totally. It was a sensation. I, you know, I watched it again like a year or so ago and, you know, parts of it I still enjoyed because it has such a dear place in my heart, but sure. it does not hold up well. It's quite cheesy. Nah. And I'm sorry if some people are offended by that. I mean, obviously Jack Nicholson is still great in it. Um, but, you know, it's quite tacky at times, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, I agree. And then there was a whole string of them. I mean, you've got Batman and Robin, which is one of the worst movies ever made. And then you've got George Clooney and his bat nipples. <laughs> you know? So bad. Um, so Alicia the, the, Silverstone. Oh, my goodness. So yeah, Chris awful. O'Donnell. Anyway, so they uh, Christopher Nolan rebooted Batman with um, Batman Begins. And, you know, the funny thing is Batman Begins, I thought was good. But I didn't think it was fantastic. I agree with you. The Dark Knight oh. changed the game for superhero movies. Spectacular. Um, and here's the thing. Heath Ledger's performance, he mean he won-upped Jack Nicholson, which yeah. he was fantastic as the yeah. Joker. Heath Ledger gave one of the... I mean, everyone I know will agree with this. He gave one of the most legendary performances of cinematic history of all time ever. Absolutely, 100%. You know, and he, uh, posthumously, he won the Oscar. Um, but, you know... I actually think it's unfair to spotlight the film just for that. 
You know, it's true. He, he, it's true. he steals every scene he's in, but the film yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. I think that movie is almost close to perfect. It is a fantastic film. And then The Dark Knight Rises, I know it was divisive with some people. I still thought it was fantastic. I really liked it you too. Know, um, and, you know, we got Tom Hardy's Bane. So now you have my permission to die. <laughs> you know, I cannot do it I very actually well. really enjoyed that too. <laughs> Kevin Smith does a great, you know, voice <laughs> of uh, Bane and so does Doug Benson. Um, which coincidentally was used in the uh, Lego Batman movie, oh, but um, so that trilogy I think was a, a fantastic uh, reboot of of Batman, and and now it's kind of on shaky grounds again. I actually think Ben Affleck is good as Batman, but they haven't done a mm. good standalone Batman movie. Um, it's okay. I mean, uh, I'm I'm debating. I'm bringing up the Dark Knight trilogy from yeah. Nolan, which I think you agree with. Totally. Um, okay. J.J. Uh, Abrams' uh, reboot of uh, Star Trek. I thought was phenomenal. That's on my list. I absolutely I love agree. That. Love and it. I think Chris Pine is fantastic as excellent. Kirk and uh, Zachary Quinto, so excellent good. as Spark and, and Simon of course, Pegg. Uh, in um, the first one, my my lover and um, my English lover as um, I, Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, That's my the second English one. English lover. I yeah. love. <laughs> That's the second that. one. Into Darkness, which I love too. It uh, was some, so good. Quite a lot of people didn't like that one. Oh, it was know? my favorite. Yeah, I because loved he it. was Khan and people were like, oh. uh, you know, because it was this big thing, is he or isn't he Khan? But I actually loved, oh, I loved the first one. I loved the second one. I didn't like the third one, uh, Star Trek Beyond that That's much. That's right, you didn't. And I I, I still really liked yeah. it. But. So I, I, I just wrote the first one. I think it, okay. re, it was a good reboot. Yeah. I, and I've, I've watched the first rebooted Star, Star Trek many times. I think it's a fantastic very film. Very good. Um, you you know, I, it, this is actually really weird. I didn't even put it on here. Um, but obviously, Star Wars would be another example. Of the course. Force Awakens is an amazing reboot. That's kind of, duh. I don't even yeah, know why I, totally. I actually didn't have it on the list. Um, maybe because it's not really a reboot remake. It just kind it's of went continue, on a hiatus. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's, that's what I thought, too. But that was phenomenal. Okay. Um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. They rebooted those quite well. See, I... I wasn't really a big fan of the second one. I haven't seen the third one yet. A lot of people liked it. Um, I liked the first one, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, quite a lot. So mm -hmm. I thought that was quite a good reboot. Um, 21, 22, Jump Street. That's what we mentioned yeah. in the first episode. It was hilarious. Unbelievable. The only reason I didn't put them on my list is because I've actually not seen the originals. So I found it unfair to do any kind of comparison, but I love those so films. It's, it's not actually a movie. It was it's a, a, a it was a TV right? series yeah. with Johnny Depp. Yeah, that was one of his uh, breakout roles. I absolutely adore those two um, films, but I still think uh, those were fantastic. Okay, yeah. here's one that I actually am excited to tell people about because not enough people saw it. Uh, Dread with Carl Urban. Really? Yeah, Judge Dread. It's just called Dread. I loved it. So Sylvester Stallone did Dread, uh, Judge Dread in the '90s, and it was god awful. Right. Oh my god, that film was terrible. Right. Um, and I, I'm British, so I grew up. Uh, uh, reading Judge Dredd in 2000 wow. AD, which is a British comic book. I don't know how big Judge Dredd is in America, actually. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, that that reboot or remake or whatever, um, I thought Carl Urban was fantastic. It's a really good film. What Visually, year was it? it's stunning. Came out, I think, maybe in like 2011 or okay. 12. Um, anyway, it, you, please check out that movie. Yeah. It has an action film it's phenomenal i know what happened was it came out i think the same year as the raid and uh. in terms of plot it has a similar story where it's like a bunch of guys basically just fighting story to story to get up this skyscraper to the top okay. and they're just fighting their way up so it was a similar type of theme so maybe it got overshadowed by that and the raid is an incredible action movie but um, i haven't seen either Oh, so, well, I mean, this is kind of a guy movie, but oh. still, uh, Dread is fantastic. I thought that was an excellent movie, and um, unfortunately, it didn't do very well at the box office, and uh, a lot of people have been petitioning to kind of do another one, and yeah. I really hope they do, because I think it's fantastic. I actually just uh, was listening to a podcast where they were mentioning it, and oh, really? saying they wanted, yeah. uh, it was on screen junkie movie fights, and yeah. they were saying, Dread, they want to see another one. They, they're they really trying to get yeah, another one. Shout out for that podcast, by the way. I love that podcast. Such a great podcast. Yeah, with a... Uh, you know Andy Signor screen uh, junkies movie fights and their banter and how kind of crazy and how much they let loose is kind of a, <laughs> an inspiration for me on this <laughs> podcast just just sit down and talk you know they yeah. go crazy I love it but uh, definitely uh, I recommend Dread that's a film that um, was a, a great kind of reboot and I wish it had better um, acclaim uh, okay Dawn of the Dead 
Uh, that's, that's on my list. Okay, Zack Snyder. So that is good. fantastic. You got me into that yeah. film. Not just as a horror movie. I mean, so it's got good. Sarah Polly in it. I think Ving Rhames. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it's a, it's a horror movie, but uh, the emotion, Incredible. the score, uh, it's fantastic. And really that's a, that's also a great Zack Snyder movie. I, I know he's kind of gone a bit, woo, you know, visually that guy is great, but that's a great movie. So yep. I definitely recommend that. That came out, I think, in like 2004. Yeah. Um, I love War of the Worlds. Uh, the Tom Cruise, That's Steven on my list Spielberg. Too. I love that movie. I think that film is great. I really do. Um, I thought, uh, I thought Tom Cruise was fantastic in it. Dakota mm-hmm. Fanning was fantastic mm-hmm. in it. Um, I thought it was intense. I, I the thought visuals it was, are yeah, incredible. I just thought it was really well done. It was yeah. a great remake, um, and it's the best version I've seen of a War of the Worlds movie because I've seen. I think that's a TV movie, and then there's a really old one. Um, I, I like it a lot. Um, okay, The Thing. That's a John Carpenter movie. Have you seen the thing? I have not. Um, you know, I saw that. Uh, it's one of those that's been on my list to see. Um, and I've never managed to somehow, it, it always slips by me. Tell me a bit more about that. Well, I actually didn't know it was a remake. Okay. And when I was uh, preparing for this episode, I discovered it was a remake. So I was like, oh, wow, then I have to put it on this list. Um, and I'll tell you one of the reasons why is I like that movie a lot. I remember watching it as a kid. I mean, it's a horror. It's uh, it's Kurt Russell. Uh, oh. The score, the themes of it, it's fantastic. But um, I watched it again recently because remember I told you, you guys, uh, I watch movies all the time. So I watched it a couple of weeks ago and I, I was actually quite surprised with how much I still loved it oh, and good. how much more like new things I picked up up out of it like I, I really enjoyed it, it it's, a, it's a classic horror movie uh, it's fantastic and apparently it's a remake so uh, I, I put it on the list awesome um, definitely recommend that film came out in 1982 um, okay I, I, I talked about this movie a few weeks ago and this is kind of funny um, The Parent Trap with Lindsay Lohan <laughs> it's so funny that you hadn't seen that <laughs> I've seen every version of that probably like 10-15 times as a kid That's and funny. they're both <laughs> adorable so apparently it's it's a remake of a, a, a Disney yeah. film it's like quite a classic apparently from the 70s I haven't seen the original um, my wife re-watched the Lindsay Lohan um, yeah. version which came out in the late 90s um, and she kept saying how good it was. And she went away uh, a month or so ago to, to visit her father for a weekend. And I was sitting down, <laughs> I saw it on Netflix or something. I was like, oh, I think I'll watch this. And I, I kind of put it on as background. I was so <laughs> into that film. It's almost embarrassing. It was so cute and charming. It's adorable. And I now understand you know, why there was an allure for Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. I was like, oh, what happened to little baby Lindsay Lohan? She was so charming she in that film. So she charming. plays dual roles, a British yeah. uh, one and uh, American. You know, American. They're twins and they concoct this plan to bring their parents back together. But yeah. that uh, it was such a charming film. I, so I really, really enjoyed it. Totally I've seen agree. it once and I just saw it a few weeks ago, but uh, I, I, I loved it. And yeah, it's a, it's a remake. That's so a great one. That counts. Okay, uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong. Uh, yes. That came out in 2005. Jack Black's in it, Naomi Watts, and Andy Serkis does the uh, the motion capture or whatever, the stop motion. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I thought it was a phenomenal version. There's a really bad uh, King Kong from the 70s, and then there's the original, which is a classic. And that is still a classic. The problem I have with it is it's so very, very outdated, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I have a hard time getting invested in those films sure. that are, you know, 60, 70 years old. I'm sorry, I do. Some are, are amazing, but um, I thought it was it was a really a, a, a very engrossing movie, very entertaining, and, yeah. and it really brought the emotion to the character of King Kong. Totally. Um, so I, I loved that, and it's Peter Jackson. That was kind of right following The Lord of the Rings, so uh, that's a great movie if you haven't seen it. And it's, it has an entire ride dedicated to it at Universal. That's right, I mean, yeah. based on that, it's... Uh, the realism. I mean, that's one of my favorite parts of my ride, the ride at Universal. Yeah. But it's 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 just it's brilliant. And Peter Jackson's just such an artist. Yeah, uh, Universal Studios. When you take the studio tour, you yeah. go through like this big a three D ride yeah. tunnel with with a, a kind of a, a a scene from King Kong, which is a yeah. uh, pretty awesome. But anyway, uh, that's that's a great movie, and I, I really loved the, uh, the the remake of that. Um, Scarface is apparently a remake. Yes, I saw that <laughs> on a list, and I was like, really? Yeah. That's a remake. It's phenomenal. Say hello to my little friend. Uh, I'm what not a movie! At, that's a line from that movie. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, Tony. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's one of Al Pacino's best roles. Beautiful. Um, it, it's it's excellent. You know, movie. look, here's the thing about Scarface. Uh, I won't go along on it, but um. 
it, it's not a wonderful film to watch now. It's quite outdated to me, yeah. but there are parts of it that are still just so excellent, memorable and yeah. classic. Um, but it's it's a, a remake, so I think that's definitely an excellent one. Um, okay, uh, 310 to Yuma. This came oh, out in like 2007. Christian Bale, um, Russell Crowe. That's a great That's film. a really good Western. Yeah. Really good. Brilliant movie. Uh, ben Foster is fantastic in it. He's got a supporting role. Um, and that, that's a remake. And uh, I I, I've that. never even seen the original, but uh, I love that, that version. Um, okay, good. The Fly came out in the 80s with Jeff Goldblum. I Baldwin. haven't seen it. Okay, it's David... Uh, uh, Cronenberg and uh, that's a that's a disturbing movie <laughs> and that's a, it's a really really good movie cool. um, it's not necessarily a movie you would watch again and again um, but it's good um, okay uh, The Departed which is obviously Martin yeah. Scorsese that's uh, Leonardo DiCaprio Brilliant film. Matt Damon Jack Nicholson um, Mark Wahlberg etc fantastic cast look I'll tell you something about that film I like The Departed I think it's a good movie I've seen the foreign film that it's a remake of, oh. Internal Affairs. And I actually think that version is better. Really? It's a subtitled movie. So The Departed, to me, doesn't have the acclaim that maybe a lot of other people do. And, and it annoys me as well that Martin Scorsese finally won his long overdue director Oscar for that movie. Because um, I think he's done other films that were far better. Right. Um, but it, it's a solid movie. It's a great a mobster movie, great performances all around it. And it is a remake. Um, but I actually uh, highly advise anyone to check out the, the actual original foreign film. Okay. I think it's called Internal Inf Inf Affairs that it's actually based on. It's a great awesome. film. Um, True Grit. Do you see True Grit? I Jeff love Bridges, True Matt Grit. Damon, Brilliant. and that brought the world uh, Haley Stanfield. Mm -hmm. We talked about her on episode one from Edge of Seventeen. Um, yeah. She got a Supporting Actress nomination, yep. uh, Oscar nomination. That was brilliant. I really liked True Grit. Um, I did not, I'm sorry, I did not like the original with John Wayne. Wasn't a fan. That's actually um, interesting you say that because I've seen it um, written on a couple of, I saw it on a couple of blogs on the the. <laughs> Um, more recent True Grip being a lot better than the yeah. original. Yeah, it, it's a great movie. I, I highly recommend it. You know, they don't do a lot of great Western, Westerns these days, but I, I highly recommend True Grit. Um, okay, so in terms of reboots, remakes done well, that's my list. Do you have other ones that you feel were done really well? I have a couple. You may actually kind of laugh at these. It's, okay. um, it's yes good if we no. have some laughter. <laughs> so in terms of, realize this is a reboot and a remake. Beauty and the Beast. The most recent Beauty and the Beast. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, it, they've it done great. it. Uh, what they've been doing with these some of these Disney movies and making them into half-human, you know, that, that human element into them, I... Um, I wanted to talk to that briefly for a little bit. I know we'll do a whole thing on Disney and Pixar right, and that right. kind of thing. But Beauty and the Beast, I really thoroughly enjoyed. I felt it has absolutely the magic and I loved what it had on in terms of the old yeah, one compared to the new one. Same with the with Jungle Book. Jungle Book was great. They yeah. did a really good job. Um, the one, um, the other few that I have, uh, but yeah. They're, well, they're... first of all, let me just say something on those two because, uh, okay, the Jungle Book was one of my favorite Disney cartoons growing up right uh so i was so excited for the the remake reboot yeah. whatever you want to call it of the jungle book and you know Human. I, I did enjoy it it was it was, good. It it was, was very well good done. but i still have just this fondness and love for the original of course. Of the course. funny thing about beauty and the beast and please i don't want anyone to beat me up i was never a huge fan of the original one and i know it's beloved right um and i love that story. so i think that's why i probably enjoyed this one because i saw it with you guys in the theater yeah. and my wife uh, and i thought Emma Watson was so charming so as well. Um, but I, I enjoyed that. So you're right. Those yeah. are kind of reboots, remakes. And and they did Cinderella yeah. as well, which I actually, that of those three, did not like so much. Oh, you did I really did not. I um, I don't know if it was the oh, actress or something, but I went in with super high expectations because I adore the original Cinderella. Oh. And I thought it would be very magical and wonderful. And I kind of, I came out underwhelmed. I, mm. As opposed to Jungle Book and Beauty and the Beast, in terms of those three remakes, that one was my least favorite. Okay, yeah. So I actually enjoyed all of those. Um, and again, um, it's funny, like the Jungle Book had big shoes to fill it because did. I, I love the original one. Um, I've probably seen the original Cinderella 
when I was young, but it's not a movie I go back right. to. So I actually really enjoyed the the, the rebooted one. But okay. but that's okay. Yeah, those those and are good examples. Only, uh, and they're doing the Lion King. Yep. They're doing Aladdin. I'm so, excited about those. I mean, those. look, these are reboots and remakes that I we're going to be suckers we're gonna for. We'll all them. line up. We'll see them. That's a no. They're going to make a, a fortune <laughs> because yeah. they're going to be watched by all moms and with their kids, yeah, and they're, they're going to be wonderful. Um, the only ones I <laughs> you you might laugh at this one, but this is apparently a, a reboot. Is True Lies. Really? True Lies is... Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes, apparently that is a reboot. Jamie and Lee Curtis? Yeah. It is one of my one of my action reboots that I absolutely adore. Wow. I've seen it many, many, many times. Well, here's times. what's funny about that. I mean, that's James Cameron, who's like, you know, he is one of the best directors of in the world. He's only made like 10 movies <laughs> in 30 years and because didn't... two of them happen to be the two highest grossing yeah. films of all time, yeah. Titanic and uh, uh, Avatar. Avatar. Um, when I saw True Lies when it came out, in the 90s, I wasn't really a big fan, fan of it. What I remembered the most was Jamie Lee Curtis's risque <laughs> yes, you know, scene. strip scene. You know, I mean, I was young, of hormones course. were flowing. <laughs> um, I watched it again recently, and I remember watching it again a, f- a couple of years ago, and it's aged quite well. It really has. I actually liked that movie. I um, love it. I had no idea it was a, a remake. It <laughs> is, and the, uh, the others I have uh, are actually Heat. Heat is a remake. Oh, okay, so that was a TV movie, apparently. Okay. That's why it was listed as a remake. To me, see, Heat is one of my favorite films Incredible of all film. time. So I, I'm sorry, I can't even classify it as a remake or reboot. It's, That's fine. It's so incredible. It's so and amazing. And I'll discuss that movie uh, uh, on another episode, okay. I'm sure, in no detail. No problem. That's and okay. this one's another one you may feel the same about is 12 Monkeys. That is apparently a also a reboot. See, you did some like deep I dive did. research. I did some deep dive research. <laughs> I didn't. I literally I, just listed them down. I had a hard time, honestly, because I hadn't seen a lot of originals as well and um, I wasn't sure which ones were remakes and and reboots Um, yeah so uh, 12 Monkeys is Terry Gilliam he directed it who's Brad Pitt uh, you know funnily enough he's one of the the Monty Python crew Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah Brad Pitt Bruce Willis is in it and uh, Madeline Stowe yeah Uh, I absolutely love 12 Monkeys brilliant film it's a mind fuck of a movie um, this is P- PG-13. I get one F word. Yeah. So <laughs> um, you're done. I'm done. Um, <laughs> Let's but go on it, to it's a great film. Ones. See, okay. So when I went to bad ones, it was like endless. Well, see, I don't. I didn't do. I don't do research in terms of like I don't Google. <laughs> I literally just it's your think, mind, right? I just I, my mind works, and I just list start listing them off, and I just there were so many. Well, let and, me do mine first then, because I literally only have a couple. Okay. It's really short. My first one that I absolutely detest for many, many reasons is Pride and Prejudice. Pride the and Prejudice. The Kira Knightley one? Yes. Oh, are I you liked ki- it. That's, you know, just the principle of the matter makes me angry. Trying to replace the Colin Firth she version. She got an Oscar nomination for that movie. Yeah, and it's ridiculous. She's, she's, she's You don't not like Kira Knightley, Liz- do you? No. I, other no, than I Love Actually. I think she's quite nice. Okay. But look, Li- Elizabeth Bennet, that character, Colin Firth, their love, that original has such a huge place in my heart that I had extremely... Okay. For me, the shoes were very hard to fill, and I thought it was honestly a, a pathetic so, attempt. Okay, so, well, I mean, you know, I don't think this is a, a shocker to anyone. I'm not a huge fan of Jane Austen movies. Uh, I saw Pride and what? Prejudice. <laughs> I, what? <laughs> so I saw it once, and I remember the reason I saw it was because it had a lot of critical acclaim. Um, and, uh, you know, that was kind of the beginning of her her kind of blossoming career, uh, Kira Knightley. So I watched it, and I thought it was quite charming. Mm. But, um, but yeah, I have never seen it again. You <laughs> so know, and okay. maybe had I not seen the original, I might have felt quite different, okay. different. But I really wanted to take some where the comparison for me was really, really strong. That's fair. I totally so get that. So that's that one. The one, the other one's the one we touched upon in the first episode, Karate Kid. The fact that they tried oh, to reboot Jayden it Smith. with yeah. Jaden Smith. And look, I, Jackie I, Chan was great. And I watched but, ten oh. minutes and turned uh, honestly was. I like, went to the theater to see that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, was, and then anyway. uh, actually, we I said Cinderella already, and then Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, with Johnny Depp. Yeah, oh, it's awful. I love that's the original. On my list. I love the yeah, original. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate. Factory. It's such a yeah. magical film, and the, the the new one is so weird and Gene just Wilder strange. cannot be replaced. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree. I th- it was really weird. Awful. Um, it, you know, again, that film was actually quite successful, and I think it even got good reviews because it was Johnny Depp's when he was at the height of his career right uh, it's not a good 
it no, movie. No, it's not and a it, good film. It, it was, it, to me, that was like a, a cash grab. Yeah. Um, some people may like it, but yeah, just do yourself a favor. Go watch the original. Really just you know. watch the original. And by the way, the original is quite weird as well. It is weird because it's a it's strange whimsical. story. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's a classic. But yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of, I, I know there are a lot more out there, but I didn't have so much to really give that I really wanted to hand that over to you. Okay, so I'm just going to go through some. Um, uh, you know, and here's, here's the point, you know, there are some remakes and reboots that I get it. it it's just too good to pass up. People love it. It's, it's successful. It brings joy and happiness. All for it, do it. Fine. But let's make some way for original ideas. There's yes. thousands of scripts. Let's just, you know, let's make some way for that. So here's the thing. Here's a perfect example. They remade Ben-Hur. Yes, okay. I heard about they this. They made that in 2016. And here's what's interesting about that. They made it with all the special effects that are available to us now. I couldn't get through half of that movie. Wow. It was terrible. And here's what's funny. I watched the original Ben-Hur a couple of months ago. Yeah. And I enjoyed it more. Wow. That film is 60 or 70 years old. Wow. The chariot race with Charlton Heston is still as gripping. Wow. And I just thought it was so interesting that a film right. with all those effects, it was it was just... Because it's not about the effects. Well, it, was point, Always. it was a pointless <laughs> remake. Right. Someone thought right. they would make money. And what was stupid about that is they cast the guy as the lead who actually is an actor I like. So it annoyed me. I can't remember his name. And that's the problem. Like, right. That, film unfortunately probably sunk his career a bit because it was a huge flop right uh, it didn't have any huge big actors in it other than morgan freeman okay. um but uh it, it that was a terrible and pointless and just so remake. you know you said you don't look at lists that was at the top of all worst remake oh, it was lists. it was god yeah. awful okay have you ever seen the remake of the wicker man with nicholas no, cage okay I have not. <laughs> <laughs> do yourself a favor <laughs> the wicker man is a is a classic I don't know, like horror? a cult oh. horror thriller from the, the 70s, I think. That okay. is a weird, spooky British movie okay. that is very good in the 70s. I can't even remember who's in it, but okay. it, it, I think it's um, Christopher Lee. Um, I may have that wrong, but it, it's a good movie. Okay. Um, it, and even though it's very old, it, it still holds up. It's a good movie. Um, Nicolas Cage remade it, and you'll find that, I guarantee, on you know nearly every list of like, almost the worst movies ever made it is so ridiculous it's got this specific scene with Nicolas Cage and you know the bees the bees oh, and it just <laughs> watch it oh, you know have a laugh but uh, it's so bad so bad um, Psycho that was ridiculous so, oh interesting okay so Alfred Hitchcock Hitchcock Psycho is a classic they remade it and it was remade by Gus Van Sante who did um, Good Will Hunting oh wow he's a great director with Vince Vaughn you know, as the main, the lead character. It's funny you say that because I had, I know it's blasphemous. I'd never seen the original, the Alfred Hitchcock Psycho. Right. I wanted to see it before I went to see the new one. And you my still friend, haven't seen it? My, no, my <laughs> friend Chelsea at the time was like, you can't go see the Vince Vaughn version first. And I was like, oh, okay, I mean, all right. But funnily enough, I, because I had nothing to compare, I thought it was an okay film. Oh my God, it's so bad. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> but, but I'm um, sure I would feel differently if I'd seen Psycho. Yeah. So it's been forgotten. And also part of the, I don't know why he made that decision. He did like a frame by frame remake, oh. which was almost pointless. Um, it's terrible. Go see the original. It's, I it's agree a classic with you. Horror I agree. Movie. Um, so that's another one that came out in the late nineties. Um, I have the karate kid. Yeah. That was, that was a huge Awful. upset. Um, Annie. Oh my God. The remake. Of oh, Annie. I didn't watch it. Oh, I couldn't bring myself Jamie Fox, to Cameron oh, Diaz. No. look, I, the original one from the eighties, the it's musical so wonderful. has a, a nice place yeah. in my heart. You know, it, it's just so charming, you yeah. know, dumb dog. Why are yeah. you following me? It's adorable. I, don't know why I keep breaking out into songs. <laughs> I can't sing. But. Tony clearly <laughs> wants to do a musical episode yeah. very badly. Yeah. And Anyway, um, the original Annie. See, here's the thing. It was like, why do it? Because it actually, what it does is it like, it taints the original. It does. Like the it original does. Annie is just such a charming, lovely film. And then it is. they yeah. remake it. And there's a lot of people that probably have never even heard of the original one. And all they know now is the new one. It was actually quite successful, even though it got critically panned, the new one. And 
coincidentally enough, I think the original one wasn't initially a success. No. Over time, it kind of grew. It's um, one I grew up on. I actually used to yeah. watch it probably every couple of weeks. Yeah. I loved it. I used to sing the songs. It was it was wonderful. Yeah. So the it's a hard not life yeah. for us. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sing song. Anyway, the original Annie definitely the uh, rebooted remake one. Awful. No, uh, RoboCop again. Oh, another one. Oh gosh. Um, yeah. It, they, they had uh, an actor who was actually quite good, Joel McKinnon, I think his name, the guy from the killing okay. tv show yep. um uh, michael keaton's in it and his role is kind of pointless you know it, it's just you know it, visually it had some cool things but it, it was totally unnecessary and here's the thing you go back and you watch the original from the 80s and it's a far superior film so go. robocop okay um point break now i remember i refused <laughs> to watch it yeah. remember i refused to go see it yeah because i love i love the original the point too break with keanu reeves I am a member of the FBI, you know, <laughs> whoa, but um, <laughs> I love Point Break, it's like Patrick Swayze, Keanu Reeves, it's uh, and it's got, um, uh, what's his name, Gary Busey, yeah. who's great in that role before he went totally batshit crazy, yeah. um, you saw the uh, remake. So the funny thing was, when I went was about to go see the remake, my friend um, Andy, whose son is named after a character in Bodhi. that film, Bodhi, Patrick Swayze. Is, which is based off that character, that name. Oh, of that's what child. they named? Yes. Oh, yes, wow. That's where the name is from. And, um, I love him. And... Um, I love Point Break. Don't get me wrong. The original. Yeah. The original. I absolutely adore it. But the, the way I went in watching the new one um, was I decided to take it as a completely different film uh, and, and, and just go from visual effects. Visually, it is a beautifully done film. Some of the, uh, the scenes they do with their stunts and the, 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 the diving off cliffs and things are beautiful. The characters can't be replaced okay. in the old one at all. So I at remember all. you saying you actually enjoyed it. I so enjoyed it as a film, but not as a comparison. A couple months later, I tried to watch it. I got 10 minutes in. I'm sure. And I turned I it understand. off. I uh, understand. The original Point Break is a fantastic Wonderful film. Wonderful film. It's got some of the best action sequences, the best bromance between so uh, Patrick Swayze and uh, Keanu Reeves' character. Amazing. Um, uh, Laurie Petty, she's fantastic in it. In it. Uh, Anthony Keardis from Red Hot Chili Peppers is in it. I don't know. Um, you know it's, it's incredible it's a fantastic movie. And, and honestly if you, yeah 100 percent. if you said to me one or the other every every day yeah so i, I don't even know what the mindset was in making yeah. that it just it didn't make sense Definitely. To, me. to me if you're going to make a remake or reboot you have to make something far Better. superior you're right. or there has to be you're a right. reason why so uh, these are just perfect examples you're totally right um Okay, I had Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. We discussed that. I had Alice in Wonderland as well. Oh, I totally agree with that too. Um, so Johnny Depp's in that as the Mad Hatter. That's now, such a here's weird what's funny movie. about that. I watched that movie again. This is when Johnny Depp was like at yeah. the height of his uh, A-list. We star went to see career. that in the cinema together. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't see it with you because I saw it in England with my oh. whole family in 3D. Oh. Um, and I enjoyed it then. And then I actually watched it later. Um, and I couldn't stand yeah. it. You know, it was just was not good. And I was like, wow, that made a billion dollars. Like the remake made a billion dollars. And then they uh, did a sequel and it crashed and burned. And I enjoyed the sequel a bit more <laughs> than the original. But yeah. they're not good yeah. films. I think I actually had the exact same uh, thing that happened on the first one. I watched it in 3D where it was kind of fascinating in 3D. And then I tried to watch it on DVD and I hated it. Right. Yeah. So it, it just, it, you know, visually it has, yeah. you know, I think seeing it in a big screen with 3D, yeah. I think that kind of immersed me yeah. in the experience. And then seeing it on home, you know, video was just like, meh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Okay. Arthur. Um, and I, I actually, I love Russell Brand. He's kind of uh, been a bit quiet the last year or so. Yeah, I, I actually think movie. he's a hilarious um, actor and comedian. Um, I love the original Arthur. I've seen it a hundred times. It, it, it's a British classic with uh, Liza Minnelli and uh, Dudley Moore. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. It's funny. Um, and... Um, yeah, Russell Brand did a remake with Greta Gerwig in it, and yeah. Helen Mirren's in it, who I love, and it is just no it's good. terrible. It's terrible. That's one of the worst remakes I've ever seen. Because I was like, you know what? Maybe they could pull that off. It's like yeah. 30 years later. I mean, Helen Mirren, she's like an Oscar-winning actress, and yeah. Russell Brand, who's like British and really quirky and funny, and oh, it was terrible. So that really, 
uh, disappointed me. Okay, I wrote this then, which I thought was kind of funny, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. But actually, when I thought about it, every horror movie they've tried to remake. Halloween, Friday the 13th, and then they would do yeah. reboots, spin-offs, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yep. Uh, you know, these are cash cows. They're just yep. doing it to, to make money and stuff like that. And like, occasionally, whatever. honestly, I enjoy the more recent ones more based on simply believability right. and effects and things, but they're honestly all just kind of the same. Yeah, I'm not a huge horror guy anyway, yep. and the funny thing, remember we watched Nightmare on Elm Street <laughs> and we actually were laughing. We, yeah, were we laughing. found it quite funny, and I remember watching the original Halloween not long ago, and I actually found it quite funny. The only, like, original horror movie that still disturbs me is Texas Ch- T- oh, yeah. Chainsaw so Massacre. That's a messed up that movie. That The Shining hold, yeah. hold well. Yeah, I like The Shining. I don't find it scary. Oh, uh, I Texas find it Texas Chainsaw very Massacre spooky. was, like, disturbing. It's super disturbing. Um, okay, Get Carter was an awful yeah, remake with that. Sylvester Stallone, and that's a Michael Caine classic. Oh, no. So that was annoying. Straw Dogs, that's a Sam Peckinpah movie with Dustin Hoffman. Okay. Uh, very brutal film for its time. Fantastic. And they remade it with Kate Bosworth and James oh. Marsden. Oh I have to do a plug for James Marsden. He's in, I he's love got, that yeah, actor. He's got a good run right yeah. now in Westworld. I actually think he's a great a- actor. Yeah. I, th- I wish that guy would get a break. I know. You know As he, a main role. Yeah, it's, I feel <laughs> I sad. Agree with you. Anyway, I that really like was him. terrible. Um, Total Recall. That's another example, like yeah, uh, it wasn't Robocop. Um, it has Colin Farrell in it. Um, it visually, it was kind of cool, um, but it was just totally pointless. The original one holds up and it's far more entertaining well that one is one again where i had not seen the original so when i went in to see it i was mildly entertained i was you know i saw it and i was okay right but um i heard from many many people who had seen the uh original how bad it was you know comparatively yeah so okay good uh, another this is like a series they tried to reboot was the pink panther series oh uh, here's the thing steve martin did those they did two movies i saw the first one and it was mildly um enjoyable i love steve martin but you you cannot yeah. replace peter I, sellers peter I'm sellers sad. is just a, a you know a comedy legend uh, and he is the pink panther that that was his series so uh, those were poor um, the Day the Earth Stood Still, that's a science fiction classic. Oh, I didn't Keanu actually know Reeves that. did a remake of it. It was, just, it was just pointless. Um, and then, oh, Clash of the Titans with Sam Worthington. Yes. So I saw it in the theater. Visually, it was kind of entertaining. Tried to watch it again later. Ugh, yeah, boring. Totally. The funny thing is, the 80s version is actually really <laughs> cheesy. It just had a kind of a, a dear, holds a dear place in my heart. Yeah. Um, that's my list. You yeah. know, there, there might be some... Do you have any others? Nope, that's about it. Uh, I was trying to think of sort of some TV series and different things, but I, you know, I haven't I haven't thought of anything else. Yeah, well, you know, and that's... Uh, it's funny you brought up TV because I'm Tony the movie guy, but uh, obviously I watch tons of TV and some of the listeners have said, uh, you know, can you review some TV shows? Sure. And we'll probably do like a Netflix episode, yeah, you we know, should. and, you know, different TV shows and things. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, TV does the same thing, actually. It tries to rehash and reboot a lot. It does. Um, but on movies, uh, that's kind of a, a little bit of a deep dive and a recap on uh, reboots and remakes. Look, some of them w- we'll see all day long. If you want to reboot Marvel movies or remake Marvel movies or, uh, you know, you want to... Uh, like, okay, here's a perfect example, Terminator. I thought Terminator was dead and buried after Genesis, because I did not like that at all. And now James Cameron has announced that he's going to bring the movie back and do it himself. Arnie's coming back, and Linda Hamilton's coming back. Wow. Now I'm like, oh. Now you'll watch Now it. I'm invested. Of, course, of yeah. course I will. So, you know, there, there are uh, films that, you know, of course we're always going to line oh, up I and see. I just thought of the, well, it's more of a sequel than a reboot, but they just, didn't they just do a an alien movie of some kind? That oh, they, yeah, they did. So... I, I mean, I, I didn't like it, and I didn't, I didn't like Prometheus. It, yeah. um, oh. it was too all over the place. So um, the only Alien films I've loved, it's kind of like the Terminator movies, was yeah. Alien and Aliens, uh, Terminator, Terminator 2, kind of the rest is like blank and doesn't exist in right. my memory. Right, <laughs> all right. There well, you go on Yeah, that. so I think that's pretty much it. We'll wind down. That was a sure. pretty clean, uh, cut and dry <laughs> episode. Um, but, you know, please uh, do, you know, comment, email us if you uh, have any other remakes or reboots that you think of that were, were good or bad. And also email us if there are any other uh, topics or your questions and feedback or things you'd like us to cover in a, a future episode. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is a... Uh, so much fun. I, I really love doing this. Uh, and I hope you guys will keep listening. And uh, we'll have another episode with you soon, okay? 
Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to Tony the Movie Guy, Episode 3, Remakes and Reboots. Just a friendly reminder to follow us on all of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Tony the Movie Guy in all three. Also, um, our email is Tony the Movie Guy Podcast at gmail.com. Please email in any ideas that you may have for topics, questions for Tony or Yenny, any other comments you may have. We're welcome to anything. Also, want to thank, as always, the designer of our logo, Sam Deidre. You're amazing. And also the composer of our theme song, Damien Perkins Neptune. Thank you guys so much. And thank you everyone for listening. Have a nice night.